Here Goes Nothing. Actually, here goes something. I'm doing this live stream. We're on the air. Welcome to Sharks Night Shift, Episode 2. Actually, I've been doing shark streams for a long time, and this might technically be Episode 3, but I've now given it this name, Sharks Night Shift. I've made all the cool graphics. I've tried to get on here as soon as possible. Tonight, we got a little bit delayed by the skills competition that occurred at SAP Center. Oh, are you ready for that rant, by the way? Shootouts should not decide hockey games? Am I only saying that because the Sharks are on the wrong side of it? Probably. But I've had this long-standing rant. I feel like tonight is the perfect opportunity to unleash it. It's frustrating in a game where... San Jose never trailed on the scoreboard, but they end up technically with the loss. You like how I did that with the music? I hit the post right there. That's what they call it in radio. You hit the post when the music stings right there. Anyway, to quickly understand this game, alternating scoring back and forth, Sharks, Devils, second period, third period, Sharks, Devils. So you go into overtime, good chances really both ways, but especially for the Sharks. Hurdle was just wide. Logan was just wide. Somebody else hit a post in overtime. If I, I should have wrote that down, I didn't. But San Jose that close to ending it three on three. Instead, we get to the shootout. It goes three rounds. The Devils win. And so in a hockey game where the Devils never had the lead, they ultimately get the same two points as if they had won the game 7 nothing. Graphic, come back here. Thank you. Sorry. Hitting the wrong buttons. Think about that for just a second. The Devils could have won tonight's game 12 0. They get two points. Tonight, they never had a lead when it came down to actual hockey, but they get the two points. Now, the Sharks do get a point, 13 on the season, 6 4 and 1 through 11 games, and their five game homestand ends with a two, I say two and three, technically a two, two and one record, but two wins. Three losses in total. All in all, missing seven players, missing your head coach. Like, it was not disastrous at the least. But last game against St. Louis, they had a chance to win. Tonight, they were right there. Had the game for the taking. I really thought when the Sharks jumped on their second power play, when Brat took the two-minute tripping penalty, they had their second opportunity you know, to have an extra attacker out there. They couldn't convert there. Was it a couple minutes later? Well, actually, it was more like 10 minutes later. Uh, but Kuokinen gets that that pinball puck. He's able to get a stick on it. He's able to beat James Reimer. And I do have to say, you know, tonight in regulation hockey, Reimer was a two or fewer goalie. That's now three really good starts in a row for the guy who's kind of tagged as, you know, probably supposed to be San Jose's backup, probably supposed to be San Jose's number two. I'm not here to make this about Aiden Hill. He didn't play tonight, but James Reimer, it's all about him. He continually looks good for the San Jose Sharks to the extent that when they start their road trip in Calgary next week, I kind of like to see James Reimer get that game. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's alternating days. I don't think there's too many back-to-backs here, so you're not going to be forced to go one way or the other or, or to split but I, I would like to see more of a Reimer heavy balance right now based on the way he's been playing. I gave you one shootout rant. Can I just give you another one right now? The shootout and points. So I talked about tonight the Devils, right? They, they win the skills competition. They get the full two points. That's as many as you can earn on a night. And the Sharks get the awkward one point. It was a three-point game tonight with the shootout win. But how about this? The way you, you kind of fix this if you're still going to continue with shootouts, make the shootout win worth two points still, but make a regulation win worth three points. And I'm not sure what to do with overtime. Is overtime still a two and one situation because it's three on three hockey? So is it is that still a split just like a shootout? But but overall, the biggest thing would be give a regulation win three points, a regulation loss no points. Let's say overtime and shootout, two points. Overtime and shootout loss, one point. That makes it so that tonight, if you're the Devils, like literally at this moment, they're hopping on the team bus. They're headed to the team plane at the airport. They feel good. Oh, we won a hockey game. Did you? You never had a lead on the scoreboard. 
you won a skills competition to help determine a hockey game. <laughs> Again, if you miss the beginning seconds and minutes of this video, you think I'm really bitter about like the Sharks losing. No, this is actually an existing rant I've had. And to be quite honest with you, if the Sharks are on the flip side of this tonight, my rant may not be as salty, but I still would have went on it. I've been meaning to get this one off my chest for a while. It's just that we, we had yet to see a shootout for San Jose in the first 10 games of the season. Tonight, game 11, you get one. I also wanted to say in the third period when I talked about San Jose getting that power play goal, and, and we do need to have the Jonathan Dolan conversation in just a second, but to be up 2-1 about five minutes into the third period, you're feeling good. The Sharks ended up only getting five shots on goal in that final frame. Now, they made up for it in overtime. Like I said, there were a handful of chances, shots that just went wide. Um, but to kind of tail away in another game with another opponent that had just played the night before, I found that to be a bit frustrating. You're, you're supposed to be taking advantage of that. It's the home team. You didn't have to travel. They did. They played last night. They flew in last night from LA, albeit. But, but still, they didn't really get into bed till 1, 2 in the morning, whatever. Take advantage of that. They used their legs last night. Sharks couldn't do that in any of the last couple of games here on the homestand. I'm not totally discouraged by what we saw tonight. Again, you're, you're in games more consistently than you're out of games. Let's be perfectly honest. The Sharks of two seasons ago and the Sharks of last year were flat out out of plenty of games. Like halfway through the game, you could write the book on the on the end result. You knew they they were done. I don't know too many games this year. Maybe the Montreal loss to start this homestand. That might have been the only game this year. Well, no, I take it back. The Boston game on the road. Uh, the, the Preds loss in Nashville. That was a close one, just low scoring. So maybe twice out of 11 games, they've been out of it. If you're in nine of 11 games, you know, giving yourself a chance to win, you'd hope that, you know, nights like the last game against St. Louis, nights like tonight just can go a little bit different with, with only a tiny amount of, of things that you needed to go right that didn't. And even in tonight's game, look, I, I go back to the shootout. I'm going to harp on the shootout, but Jesper Bratt's goal almost did not beat James Reimer. Reimer made the pad save with the, the right leg, and it just trickles past the goal line before he can get to it. So... Frustrating in that sense, the shootout loss, first time we're talking about it this season. I guess five out of a possible 10 points for this team on this homestand. Missing seven players and the head coach and the head trainer and the equipment manager. You know, there you go. So that's, uh, that's my rant on that. Okay, I, I am going to take some questions here in just a second. I want to let you guys know that I got the computer ready. I'm totally on board with that, and that's how I want to spend the final minutes. But I, I do want to say... One more thing about tonight's game. Well, let me make sure there's nothing else. Oh, let me just throw this in here. Mario Ferraro. What a beast. He's been playing more minutes. Obviously, two years ago when he was paired with Burns, you knew that was a statement. This past offseason when he was given an A on his sweater, that was a statement by the team in a positive way. And what he's been doing along with Burnsy, playing heavy, high minutes, what do they each play, like 30 plus tonight? Uh, playing important and heavy minutes in the absence of, what, four missing regular D-men on the team. Love to see it. Love to see his pass to Rudolph Balsers for his second goal in the season. The setup, he jumped in the play. He saw the passing lane. Just, I think right now is the biggest segment and statement that Mario has made in the NHL. Like, he's been good here and there, and last year was kind of a rough season for him and in particular ways, but quite honestly, it was for everybody on the team. Uh, I, I think this is not only among the best we've seen him play, but also this is kind of the signature and the statement for Mario Ferraro uh, during his time as a Shark. They need him the most. He's delivering the most. He's definitely, you know, he's earning the, he's kind of earning the honor that the team gave him this past offseason. Okay, Jonathan Dolan. What a story. The first father-son duo to ever play for the Sharks. Ulf did it in the early 90s. Now Jonathan's doing it here in the early 2020s. He's got five goals now 
in his first 11 NHL games. Let me do the quick math here. Carry the one, da-da-da-da-da. Yeah, he's on pace for a ridiculous season, goal-wise, points-wise, and recognition-wise. But I don't, even, I don't want to go down that road. That's crazy. Let's literally hold our horses on that. But I, I want to say how encouraging it is to see him continue to thrive. Now, a lot of Sharks fans are still a bit sensitive and a bit touched by the fact that William Eklund came here, got drafted, was great in camp, was great in preseason, made the team, was pretty good to start, and then after nine games, he's not only not on the Sharks, he's not even on the continent anymore. Uh, San Jose sent him back to to Jur Gardens where he's going to play this season in Sweden. He's 19 years old. They want him to develop. They don't know how he's going to be after 25 games, after 45 games. Like they they saw enough and it, they admitted Doug Wilson did one of the hardest decisions he's ever had to make. So, you know, San Jose really liked, and I say the fans really liked the trio of rookies this year, Weatherby and specifically Weatherby and Eklund and Jonathan Dolan. So Eklund's out of the picture for now and for this season, but don't get it twisted. He'll be back and he'll be better than ever when we see him. But Jonathan Dolan is almost his exact storyline. Dolan was over in the States a couple seasons ago, realized that he needed some more polishing, so he went back to Europe for last season, thrived in his game, was his league's leading scorer, was his league's MVP. Then he comes back here this year, and look what he's done. So I said this in a tweet, and I don't know if I you know phrased it properly, but everybody's a little bit sour on how you know, the Eklund situation turned out. You won't get to see him this year, but don't sleep on Jonathan Dolan in the meantime. Figuratively, don't sleep on him. Not, hey, don't literally sleep on him either, like on top of him. <laughs> Somebody replied to my tweet said, he's not a pillow, dude. It's a great one. But no, I mean, the way Dolan is scoring tonight, it was in the power play. When he's got the puck, he's dangerous. He finds himself in opportunities. Like he was in that late two-on-one or two-on-two rush with Couture. Um it, there's instinct right there, and it's just, I, I love the storyline. Like, he wasn't ready for the league. He realized it, worked on it, came back. Now he is. I love the fact that he's got the lineage with his dad. For You know, it's a, it's a familiar name if you're a longtime Sharks fan. And the pace, five goals in 11 games. Like, again, do the math, but don't say it out loud. Save the math on Jonathan Dolan. Can I also throw in the duster that he's working with? I want to like push some leaves around with that thing. It is broom quality. It is push broom quality. <laughs> that mustache he's got. As Honor said tonight, it's for November, you know, like the November mustache, but uh, he started it in July, probably. It's a thing of beauty. Love seeing Dolan. You know, if we're going to pin the rookies out there right now, he and Weatherby continue to impress every single time out there. And uh, we'll see where the season goes for them. Okay, now I think I'm ready for the chat. I'm ready to dive in. Uh, let me begin with Jack. And I apologize, you, I think, put this in the chat a long time ago, right before I started. This is too late for you. You know what? It's kind of too late for me. We've just passed the 11 o'clock hour. But PSA, don't forget tonight, you get an extra hour of sleep. So it really, if it's 11 o'clock right now, come on, it's only 10 o'clock for you. It's not that late. But I know, overtime and the shootout, that's all I was thinking during the postgame show. i got to start my live stream on time. Uh, you hate overtimes too, P.S. Well, I, I, I don't know that I hate overtime. It's the shootouts. And the way they decide the result, the way they distribute the points, uh, that's the thing for me. Uh, Merkley shouldn't have coughed up the puck in front of his net, though. I think you're talking about the Kuokkanen goal, kind of the, the pinball situation. Three minutes left, two, 256 left in the game. Unfortunate, again. That's as close as the Devils got to even having a lead in tonight's game, was tying it with three minutes left. Um, those things happen. Unfortunate. Reimer was that close to making the stop, too. I think shootout should end with just one shot. There should always be a rebuttal opportunity. Oh, shouldn't end with just one shot. Well, GM, let me ask you this, too. And I don't know if you're a baseball fan or not, but what's crazy to me is that in baseball, home teams do everything... Like they can't, I mean, they don't do everything they can. It's inherent that home teams get to bat last. Like you do everything to be the home team. That's what I'm trying to say. 
in a playoff series. You want to bat last. And I apologize that this thing seems to be jumping around there. It's a technical glitch. I'm going to have to work that one out. But in hockey, you're the home team. And this is not just the Sharks. A lot of teams do this. They elect to go shoot first. They want to put the pressure on the opposition. Like, we score now, you have to score. Isn't that crazy? Baseball and hockey literally work in the opposite directions in terms of going first and who they think the advantage goes to there. <laughs> Uncle Brody, you missed the old Sharks versus Mighty Ducks classic games. Uh, you're going to see Anaheim a lot this year. You're just not going to see him uh, for a significant time. The Sharks' next game finally is their first division opponent. We're 11 games in. All we've seen is uh, teams from, what, the Central, I guess, the, the East. It, it, we have not seen a Pacific team so far. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know what? Uh, working with Drew reminds me of a lot of the 90s. Sharks, Mighty Ducks, they ought to call them the Mighty Ducks again. Uh, Nicola, do I know or have I heard if hockey will start broadcasting in 4K? You know, it's amazing that technology has now been around for years and games have been produced in 4K for a while, especially national games, but they just have not been delivered in 4K. There's kind of an infrastructure problem in the broadcast industry that, you know, like we can do everything we want in 4K. We can produce it, we can edit it, we can shoot it that way, we can capture it that way. But getting it in 4K, the bandwidth that's required to produce it and then get it through a cable system or a satellite system or certainly a live stream would take up way too much bandwidth. Technology has not really allowed for 4K to be delivered as widely as I think a lot of people would actually like it. So that that's kind of the bottleneck in the whole thing. You hate the runner on second to start the 10th. Well, look, if you hate that, then you should probably hate the shootout. It's basically the same thing. Drew with some uh, down-to-earth thoughts here. All in all, I can't be upset that the Sharks go in 2-1-1. One, one. Actually, what? 2-2-1 two, two and one on the homestand. With all their COVID-related troubles, they are, yeah, 6-4-1 and one, and currently tied with Anaheim for third in the Pacific. 13 points in 11 games. I mean, clearly you want more than an 80-something point season. You're going to have to have that if you want to crack the playoffs. And look, that's the ultimate goal for this team this year get back in the postseason conversation. I, I agree to a certain extent. I just, I find what's frustrating is the last game against St. Louis, right there for him. Tonight's game against the Devils, right there for him. I got a point tonight, but not the ultimate two. Oh, Drew, you said it. Dolan on pace for, uh, don't look. I won't say it. It's on your screen, <laughs> but I agree with you. Oh, Alden. Alden, you hit it on the head. And how could I forget about all the posts we saw? Three in the first period alone, one later on in the game. Four posts is what I counted for San Jose. Imagine, and again, that's when I, when I say the game was there for the taking. Imagine if just one of those goes in. Ball game. Sharks get the full two points. And they win three of five on this very rough and rugged homestand. And Reimer was great. Um, I don't want to make this all about bad fortunes for, for San Jose. He was very good again. And that's why I said earlier, wouldn't hesitate to, to roll with him once more uh, for another start. Tony saying they really miss Eric Carlson and the rest of the team played as if sick, as if COVID-19 is spreading all the way. Uh, not to make light of that situation, Tony, and I, I know you're probably not, but um, they, they did look a little bit, Passive, maybe, in the third period. They scored a goal. They got one on the power play. Uh, drew another penalty where they could have got another one. But they go back to five shots in the third period. And check this out. I mean, this is rare, right? The Sharks never cracked double-digit shot, double shots in any of the three periods tonight. Nine and nine and five. And the shot count was low for both sides. But that's that's not prototypical Sharks hockey in terms of Shot quantity and maybe shot quality. Kevin, Sharks need to go back to the lines that had chemistry. Why change up? Bob needs to get fired. Uh Kevin, can I can I just say for a second here? Do I have do I have the uh oh no, see I screwed that up. I screwed that up. Well let me just play this then. Sorry. Kevin. What kind, what, 
Bob Bugner's not even at the arena. John McClain's been the head coach. And in all reality, go back to what the lines they had um, before last Saturday when seven players were instantly removed from the lineup. Like, they've been through a lot. So I, I know you're frustrated. I don't mean to take it out on you. I know you weren't trying to, you know, be outrageous here, but, you know, there's a lot of things right there that, that kind of catch my ears. All right. Uh, oh, <laughs> Nicola, thanks for, uh, thanks for checking out my subscriber count. I think that's what you're talking about there. The road to 10,000. Yeah. You know what? Let me take this second to, uh, to plug the channel. If you're here watching and you're not subscribing, you know I would really appreciate that. Hit me up, a uh, little subscription. Thumbs up on this video. Uh, if you like it, that'll help recommend it to people later tonight or tomorrow when they wake up and they realize they have an extra hour to do something with. So yeah, I, uh, I really appreciate that. Nicola, thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the plug. I will send it. I don't know what that means to send it, but I will definitely try and send it. All right, where are we here in the live chat? I'm so sorry, I'm a little bit behind. Oh, Tony, what about Patrick Marlowe? They could use him on the ice with COVID taking out the others. Any news if he wants to switch to coaching? You know what? I have not talked to Patty in a couple of weeks, but funny you mention it. He is on my agenda for a text or a phone call. I want to see if we can get him on our show next week sometime, just to chat, see what he's up to, uh, see how the training's going. I'm sure he hasn't stopped. I'm sure, I, I would guess... He's keeping ready to go and in good shape and is making phone calls and waiting for the ultimate phone call. Uh, so yeah, you know what? We'll, uh, we'll check in with him soon. Jack Ferraro getting that role increase is awesome. I love how he's getting that experience and not just playing in it, but thriving so far. Have to totally agree right there. And I, and I think, you know, last season was a matter of step forward, maybe step back, but the, the whole team was struggling. A lot of individuals going separate ways. And this year, he flat out said in our pregame show tonight, in fact, the video is somewhere else here on my YouTube channel, that you know he realizes his role on this team is to be a conduit between a lot of the older players who he relates to, but also a lot of the younger players who are you know years younger than he is now, to kind of be that bridge. Uh, it's important that, you know, Logan Couture was one of those guys years ago. Uh, now he's older. So it's, it's good to have those guys that can relate with the youngest but also with the veterans. I know that sounds maybe extreme or foreign to some of you, but I'm telling you, being around a, a team and a group where you know some have families and kids and they're living a totally different life than a 19, 20, or 21-year-old does, and you, know, you understand that, right? I'm sure those of you with uh, colleagues at work and you're on one side of the life spectrum and they're on the other, like you have different responsibilities than they do. You've got a child and a house to pay for and this and that. And, and your buddy at work who sits next to you, uh, he or she is single and 22 and going out later tonight or, you know, whatever. So it's a different lifestyle. You, you do need those, those, bond, uh, those bonds and those conduits in between. Uh, Drew, um, you know, going back to Eklund, he could have been sent to the Barracuda uh, Jurgardens is his team in Sweden, so that that's where he was basically reassigned to them. Um, but the Barracuda was an option. I think what a lot of us realized in retrospect is that although he'd be playing here in North America on the same size and dimensions of ice, maybe it was a more risky situation. Um, Ross McEwen, longtime Sharks reporter put this on Twitter yesterday, and I, th I thought it was very well stated. You know, in the, the American Hockey League, you may have some older, bigger veteran players who look at a 19-year-old and his promise and what he's going to pan out to be, and you say, all right, I'm going to take a run at this kid. I'm going to show him a little something. Do you really want Eklund facing that on a regular basis? So in that sense, and also in the sense that if he played for the Barracuda, he wouldn't get a chance to play in the World Juniors, he wouldn't get the opportunity to truly dominate in a league like Dolan did last year. I bet you the Sharks did a lot of research on what Dolan went through and how he was better for it and thought that maybe this would be the best case and course for William Eklund. And I also, I saw this a lot yesterday. A lot of fans and, and, and critics of the move said, well, the Sharks are just trying to be 
uh, you know, cheap with his contract. They're trying to stretch him out and get more out of him for another year. I mean, it is true. The benefit you get is that this season doesn't count in terms of UFA versus RFA or the other way around. But but no, that that's never been the Sharks' motive. I, I mean, if if they thought that this season was in his best interest here, there was no reason that they wouldn't have done it. And there, there was a reason that he played all nine games. They liked what they saw. They wanted to see more of it. They truly wanted to see, I think, how he would pan out over the longest term possible. And they saw enough to understand that it was a tough decision. But his best case scenario would be to develop elsewhere. And I, I will say this. How would he have looked after 25 games, after 45 games, after 75 games? Maybe the same. But maybe the season would have wore on him. We, we don't know. Only the Sharks had that, that best inside track, and this is the direction they're going. All right, I'm not going to go uh, too much longer here, but I do want to try and get to uh, as many questions as I can here. Nine games. Nine is max games for an ELC player can play without losing a year. Also, how much better is the Pacific Division this year, and should it still be considered the NHL's weakest division? Depends on how Seattle pans out. Obviously, Las Vegas is going through a ton of injury adversity. And I think Edmonton and Calgary are are much improved. I think the Sharks, Ducks, and Kings, as much as they might have been hovering around the bottom the last couple of years, you're going to see better off teams there. So to answer the question, Jordan, and it's a great point, it might still be considered, considered that for a while longer. But I think you can clearly see the trend for all the teams in this division is moving up. And I I would estimate that in the next year or two, that it will be one of the most toughest and dominant divisions in the league all over again. Jack, you just realized why you're here is because you get an extra hour tonight. Yeah, you know what? I appreciate you. (laughs) I appreciate you spending it here with me. That's awesome. Uh, Push for the playoffs or tank since Eklund is gone. Look, I, I think this group has got cohesion. They've got motivation. I The Sharks have never not made the playoffs three years in a row. Excuse me. They've never not made it three years in a row. They're sitting on two right now. I know the players aren't aware of that, but it's not the way the team operates. They're not a franchise that doesn't ever put together three years where they don't make it. Even in the expansion days, that never happened. So... I don't think tanking is, yeah, that's not in the, that's not in the cards. That's not in the direction that they want to go. And I don't think any, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. I know it happened. It seems to happen across pro sports, but, uh, Tony saying Eklund needs to develop on a North American size rink and the Swedish national junior team may help him dominate in larger rinks, but slow development in NHL size, yeah, rink size matters, increases hitting, but you know what? But he has now played it. He got a taste of this. I, You know, I am sure as he heads back to Sweden, that's going to be a long flight. And I think he was pretty emotionally distraught in his interview yesterday. Juru Mendes says, great, be upset. Use that as motivation. I hope the chip on his shoulder works in the positive direction. Elliot, uh, just wanted to say thanks for what we're doing here on YouTube. You're a Sharks fan from the UK, so you're watching most games on demand the day after. Oh, puck drop at 2 to 3.30 in the morning. Yikes. Elliot, well, I, I really appreciate you being here. I'm always fascinated by the fact that here I am sitting in a conference room in San Francisco, California, and you are thousands of miles away, and you're seeing me in full HD quality. Hopefully it looks and sounds good, by the way. Um, but I'm always fascinated by that. And I love the fact that you're here. Um, let me go back to your comment here. Watching the streams on demand after the game delay really helps you stay informed and engaged with the fan base all the way over in the UK. Elliot, that is awesome. That's music to my ears. Um, I, I do this for a lot of reasons. Uh, how many viewers are here? I'm happy when there's a lot. I don't care when there's not that many. Uh, I'm doing it you know, for the passion of this and for comments just like yours right there. This is Sharks Night Shift, by the way. Uh, that's the new branding of, of my Q&A sessions and my post-game debriefs. So thanks, Elliot. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, boy, there's looks like there's a lot of debate back and forth about 
COVID and testing, and I am not jumping in the middle of that. I mean, I could explain how I feel about that. You should probably know me and anticipate exactly how I feel about that. Uh, oh, AJ. AJ of Teal Town USA fame. McLean has had work to do or had, has had to work without seven regulars. She's doing a great job along with goaltending. I would definitely agree with that. They've been playing pretty well, pretty damn well, Avocado Flight says in your in your opinion. Like that missing gear from last year seems to be have seems to have be seems to have been found at times. I fully agree. I think you hit the nail on the head right there. And, and I said this at the end of our TV program. These are games and sequences this year where the sharks of last season, they fall apart. They're not even in the games. Or they, you know. They lose multiples in a row. They, they've lost two now in a row, although they had chances to win both of them. In prior years, they're just not even in these games. So I, I do see progress. I think that, you know, sometimes that's going to be frustrating that it doesn't just happen like that, but I clearly do see progress. Uh, Big Toke RX. I've got, I, I can put that picture together. Um, I miss seeing everybody at the games too. What's my take on Balsers? Uh, in your opinion, you, you thought you saw some hustle in them. Hope he brings some good to the team. Yeah, and I, we saw a lot of that last year. Uh, Rudolph Balsers, you know, has obviously earned a top six role. They put him in that position last year. He has, you know, capitalized on it. Maybe, maybe not so much this year. His second goal in 11 games, but he is an important player for depth for this team. And yeah, I agree. I like, I, I think hustle. You mentioned that word. I like the way he skates. I like the way he drives. Not the car, like drives to the net. But, uh, but yeah. All right, I am, <laughs> I am running out of gas. Scott, hey, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being here. I am the M slash parentheses man. Man, okay, I get it. All right, appreciate that. Um, and Mark, oh, thank you very much for, for saying that. I really appreciate it. And the, and the Don Cherry avatar? Great shades on Cherry there. <laughs> I get what you meant. <laughs> uh, well, look, you know what? I, I, I was in the camp on Eklund, and this is my last comment here. I was in the camp last year, uh, um, last time we were on TV, before I knew that the, the, the news was going to break this way. It was a surprise to me that, that he was going to Sweden. I thought for so many ways... He had shown us that he belonged here. Like he was, he was not getting overwhelmed here. Like that was my take. And that was my reasoning why I thought he would stay. But I think if you look deeper, what the Sharks might have seen is that it wasn't sustainable. His time here was maybe going to be less productive than they needed to be. And he wouldn't get these other opportunities to grow, mature, and be the superstar player that a lot of people think he's going to be. Logan Couture specifically pulled him aside, had a chat with him. I'm just, I'm hoping that he goes back across the pond with a lot of encouragement, with a lot of understanding that this is going to happen. And just because it's not happening right now, you know, you shouldn't take that personal. You should use it as motivation, but just know that every day that you play and practice and train, you're getting better. You're getting one step closer to being what everybody thinks and, and knows you're capable of. No Eklund for the rest of this season, I think. I guess he's back in Sweden for good, but Jonathan Dolan, I'll tell you what. That's that's kind of now the new one that I'm on. Dolan watch all the time. Love the story, love the mustache. Five goals in 11 games. And, and just going back to my, my main point out of the gate tonight. In hockey, how do you never trail in the game and you end up as the losing team? If you're the Devils tonight, how do you never have a lead in the hockey game at all? You never let on the scoreboard for a single second, but you win the shootout, and because of it, you get the same two points as if you had won 12 0. I'm going to go sleep this one off. I will see everybody next week on TV and probably tomorrow here on YouTube. Have a good night. Don't forget to set your clocks back one hour. All right, see you later.